Good evening, everyone. This is Prophetess Angela Richardson. I'm coming in to do a live on today of a teaching that God has given me. So I'm going to um, teach on something that he has given me. And it's going to be a powerful word um, that God has given me on this week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and invite a couple people. And then I'm going to go ahead and get started on this lesson. I, I don't want to be on here a long time, but, you know, we're going to let God flow like he want to flow on today. So let me invite those couple people. And what we're going to be talking about today is God specializes in fixing broken people and broken hearts. And, you know, God is able to do everything but failed. And he's the healer of a broken heart. He will heal broken hearts. But all we got to do is release what's in our hearts over to God and he's able to heal those those areas in our life. And he's more than able, more than willing to heal us in those areas. But first, we have to release those things over to him. We cannot keep holding on to things when God wants us to release things. So uh, when we begin to release things to God and start doing what he's wanting us to do uh, is release so we can be healed in that area. And so he He wants us healed. So I'm here to let you know that God wants you healed in, in whatever particular area that you may be dealing with. God wants you healed in that area. It, the word of God said the healing and deliverance is the children's bread. If you are a man or woman of God, then healing and deliverance belongs to you. And so I don't, you know, you can go back to one of my lessons I taught, I think it was a couple of weeks ago when it was talking about this, um, the, um, the Canaanite woman had went to Jesus to have her daughter healed. And, um, and he told her he didn't, wasn't, couldn't give her, um, um, he wasn't giving his, uh, to the dogs, you know, giving, um, what couldn't heal her because she was considered a dog because, uh, she was not non Jew, but she told him even the, um, the um the dogs receive the uh, crumbs that fall from the master's table, and so he told her her faith was strong. So your daughter is healed at that very moment. So the her daughter was immediately healed by the faith that she had for her daughter. You know what I'm saying? So God is able to heal us, but it's going to take the faith of God. So you're going to have to have faith to be healed in this area, and you're going to have to give everything that's concerning you over to God. When we try to keep holding on to things, it's not going to help us any trying to hold on things, hold on to unforgiveness, hold on to bitterness, hold on, uh, um, waiting on somebody, you know, for, you know, been waiting on people for years and we still holding on and waiting on those people to, uh, notice us, uh, to, uh, respond to us. But God wants us to be healed in those areas because he wants your heart healed in that area because he has someone special and, and, um, that's already picked out for you. But before you can receive them, your heart has to be healed in that area and then you'll be able to receive them. So I'm going to go. I don't did all my invites. So I'm going to go ahead and get on the live. You know, um, the word has to go forth regardless of if I got 10 people online or I don't have nobody online. But the word, st word still has to go forth on the day. So like I said, my title is Jesus specializes in fixing broken people and broken hearts. So I'm going to pray us in. Then I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's again that we come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, I pray that you come on to this live. Lord, anoint my voice right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, Lord the hearts that's going to receive the word on today, that they will receive what you're saying concerning their hearts and minds right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, that they will allow you to come in and heal those broken areas in them so they can walk in the freedom and walk in wholeness that you declared in your word for them to walk in right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just release everything over to you so you can have your way on this live on today. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, Jesus specializes in fixing broken people and broken hearts. And that's one of his specialties. You know, he's able to do anything but fail concerning us. He's able to fix your broken heart. But first, you got to release whatever's in your heart to him. When you release whatever is, is in your heart to him, then he can fix you in that area. And he wants to fix you in that area. And the scripture I'm going to use today is Psalms 147 and 3. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It said, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrow, sorrows. So he wants to heal those areas in our hearts, you know, uh, that things maybe we... 
We're still dealing with stuff from our childhood, maybe with our dads, maybe with our moms or, or some, our, some other family members or grandparents. You know, he wants to heal those areas in us. And, you know, when we get healed in those areas, now we're able to help someone else get healed in those areas. But we first must be healed first before we can help someone else get healed and delivered in those areas. So um, it's right here. It says specialize. I'm look, I looked at the word specializes so I, you can get a better definition of it. It says specialize in Miriam Wessel is to concentrate one's effort in a special activity, field of practice. So, you know, if you have maybe you um, uh, broke your leg or something, you know, and then you got to go to an orthopedic surgeon. surgeon so he specializes in orthopedics. He he specializes in, in, in uh, uh, problems of the bone. And so then when you have something like that, you have to go someone who's specialized in a particular area. But I'm here to let you know that Jesus specializes in whatever that you may be dealing with, whatever may be uh, um, bothering you, whatever may be holding you back. Jesus deal his, he deals with that. He's able to do that because Jesus is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Um, he's all knowing, you know, so he knows as, exactly what be going on with us. But many times he won't force himself on us. We have to release things over to him. So when you release what's going on with you or what's troubling you over to him, he's able to help you in that area, but you must release it. You must release it to him. So healing can begin in your life. Many times it may take more than one um, session or whatever for you to be healed in that, you know, when you're going through deliverance or when you're um, doing deliverance on someone, you may have to go through more than one session for them to be healed and delivered because it may be some stuff that's way embedded in their hearts that they don't even realize that it's there, but God is revealing it so they can be healed in those areas. God want to uproot anything in your heart that is not of him, any pain, any trauma, any wound, any, anything that's in your heart, any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any hatred, any malice or anything that's in your heart. He want to uproot that out of your heart so your heart can be healed so you can minister or you can do whatever he's calling you to do from a healed place and not from a place of brokenness or a place of bleeding all over everybody because you know, you're not fully healed in that area. So that, that is why he wants to heal us in these areas. So a broken heart floods your soul with immense pain and grief. It as if your heart has been ripped out of your body. You know, I've, I've, I've had a broken heart, you know, uh, I had relationships that broke my heart, you know, but I had to realize I had to give them up to God because there's no way I could be where I am now in God or be where I am now as, as a married woman still holding on to pains from my past, from other relationships. There's no way you can do that because you're going to see everybody the way you saw those, those other relationships you was in. And now when you see the man of God that God is going to bring to you, you're still looking from clouded vision. Your vision is clouded because you're not being healed in those areas. But God want to clear up your vision. He want to move the cataracts from your eyes so you can be able to see that when he sends the, that perfect man or that perfect woman, into your life, you know, those that are single, uh, that those perfect people in the, in your life, that's going to be matched up to you, that you'll be able to tell them from the, from the counterfeit that you won't be picking a counterfeit. Think it's the real thing. So it's so very important that you allow God to heal you, you heal your heart in that area. So you can always walk from a healed place and not a wounded place, but a healed place. Say so God does heal the broken hearted. But the first thing that we must do is come and him, come, come to him in prayer. Go to him in prayer. You know, if you're hurting on certain things, go to him in, in fervent prayer and secret prayer and just be real with God. I tell people all the time to be real with God. You can't fool God. And many times you can't fool people. So your best bet is to be real with God. Tell him exactly where you are about forgiving these people, exactly how you feel about this person or, you know, whatever's going on with you. Be real with him because he wants to help you and he will help you. But you got to be real with him and let him know exactly what you're dealing with. You know, uh, you know, maybe they done done so much to do. You just feel like you just can't forgive them that you, you know, you know, that's they so much they done done to you. Just feel like that you just can't forgive them. They just keep doing stuff over and over and over. And you feel like you can't forgive them. You're going to have to because God has more for you. 
And the more is walking through forgiveness. You're going to have to walk through forgiveness and forgive those people because we got to realize, you know, that, you know, we're dealing with infallible people. You know, we're infallible. We have, we have a tendency to fall every now and then, but we don't just stay there. When we fall, we're going to get back up and, and ask God to forgive us and continue to move forward in God. And so we're going to have to forgive somebody. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, there's no way in the world you can stay in the world and not forgive nobody because all this pain begin to pile up on you. And next thing you know, it started affecting your body. And next thing you know, you may be having a uh, back pain, arthritis, you know, uh, bursitis, all these different kinds of arthritis in your body. It's because you are still holding on to unforgiveness. You're still holding on um, to pains of the past. So God wants to heal us in this area. So we have to allow God to do what he want to do in us. And, you know, a lot of times just because we walk in forgiveness to, to what someone has done to us doesn't mean we're excusing them for what they've done, but it's going to help us in the long run. Forgiveness is not for the other person because most of the time they're going on about their life doing whatever. God knows whatever. Forgiveness is for us so we can move forward in God so we don't have anything blocking our prayers when we're praying unto God so we don't have anything blocking our, uh, from us reaching our destiny so it's so very important that we forgive people we got to realize that if they ain't fully saved you know if they ain't fully who they who they supposed to be in Christ and they still operating out of their flesh you know what I'm saying we got to realize when you're operating out of your flesh that is not of God you know, you know what I'm saying? So we got to realize, you know, a lot of times we think people, uh, we look at people and think they're supposed to be saved. Maybe they have, you know, certain jobs or certain things, you know, but you know, if they hadn't fully surrendered their lives over to God, they still trying to control their own life and they ain't really surrendered their, their lives to God and they hadn't come to the end of themselves. You know, they still trying to put their hands in what God is doing. You know, you're going to have, you're going to deal with people that ain't fully where they need to be in the Lord. They may, you know, may, uh, can pray a good prayer. They may can, uh, uh, do a sermon or whatever, but if they ain't fully healed and delivered, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you will know, you know, by, by the fruit that they bear, you know, because there's no way in the world that you can have, uh, maybe a uh, apple tree. And then you look on there and it's grapes, you know what I'm saying? You're going that you want their fruit is going to speak for them. So, you know, if you're, you're dealing with somebody and they're, not who they're who, who they say they are and their you, you know their life is not lining up with the word of god then they're still trying to operate in their spirit that spirit of carnality they hadn't really surrendered their life to christ and so they're they're allowed to do anything i'm just being real they will allow, uh, do anything you know because they're not being led by the holy spirit when you're walking in carnality you're not being led by the holy spirit you are being led by your flesh so that's why, you know, when, you know, when we come into contact with these people and, you know, um, you know, uh, you start liking somebody and you come in contact with somebody and they operate always operating out of their flesh because they hadn't fully surrendered to God, you know, and they hadn't, they don't have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them, uh, you know, because gifts and calling come without repentance, you know, if they, they, we, God has put them in there, uh, in us and they, he's not going to take them back. So we go operate most of the time we're, we're operating in them gifts, but that don't mean that we have totally surrendered our life to Christ. Don't mean we got the Holy Ghost cause we operating in them gifts. You know what I'm saying? So we may be walking from, from a place of carnality. You know, the word of God said a, a carnal person is empty against God. So it goes against God. So you're going to have to have the Holy spirit on the inside of you. So if you're dealing with somebody that's walking in carnality, you, you, they'll, they, they'll, they'll do anything, you know, because they don't have nothing to stop them from doing it. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. So they're going to do whatever they flesh tell them to do, whatever the enemy tell them to do, uh, whatever, you know, they're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? They're going to ride, they're going to, because they don't have nothing to get in them to stop them from doing it. So, you know, so a lot of time we're dealing with people like that, you know, that, you know, lukewarm, you know, the word of God says, either you hot or you're cold, you can't be lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out his mouth. So many times we're dealing with people that are lukewarm. You know, I'm just going to, I'm just taking it there because that's what it is. We're dealing with people that are lukewarm. They are, car they are carnal, very carnal. You know, because they do stuff that the world be doing. They very carnal. 
you know what I'm saying? Because they hadn't surrendered their lives over to God. And so, you know, um, you know, so we got to, you know, just forgive them because they're going to act like who their father is. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, then their father is not God. So, and they're, and they're, so if they're walking in carnality and everything they're doing, their father is the devil. So they're going to act like who their father is because there's no way that, that someone that's walking in carnality, carnality, let me get my words straight. Carnality, and they going to act like they got the Holy Spirit because it ain't in them. How can they act like what ain't in them? You know what I'm saying? And so when we're dealing with those type of people, we just think, well, well, they, you know, they pray good. They, they, they are uh, saying good. You know, they do all this. But that's just that's some gifts. They're just operating out of those gifts. They don't have the Holy Spirit. And they need the Holy Spirit because there's no way they can live a truly of the uh dependent life on god if they don't have the holy spirit because now they're operating only out of their flesh and so that's the type of people a lot of times that we'll be dealing with and you know we we we'll get upset because they're not they don't do what we think they should be doing because they're doing what their father the devil has told them to do that they, they're led by who, whoever father they are whoever they whoever's their father you know what I'm saying? So we got to get it in our mind and get an understanding that they can't be who we may want them to be, the man or woman of God that we want them to be when the Holy Ghost don't live, don't live within them. He don't reside in them. They can't be that person. They can only be who they are until they totally to surrender their lives onto God and, and take back, you know what I'm saying, and uh, surrender their lives to God and get filled with the Holy Ghost so they can help be led by the Holy Spirit. Because one thing, when they be led by the Holy Spirit, he ain't going to let you be doing all kind of crazy stuff because he's not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because he, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to, whatever he tell you to do, it's going to be lined up with God's word. And if you're doing anything that doesn't line with God's word, then, then you need to check yourself because you know, you may be done, it's going to walk off a little bit. You know, you need to get back closer to God. But what I'm saying is, a lot of times when we're dealing with people like that, just because they may have this position or this, that position or whatever, don't mean they totally sold out to God. And then we got to, when you, when you walk it up those, with the, around those ones with that different, those different personalities, because they hadn't really surrendered their lives to Christ. So we got to know, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, they, we got we to forgive them because they acting like they fathered the devil. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, they hadn't truly surrendered their life to Christ, then they can't, they can only act who their father is. And if they're, they're not, if God is not their father, then Satan is, you know what I'm saying? And so we got to forgive them and move forward because God has so much better for you. But better is walking in forgiveness. You, the, your better that you seek is going, you're going to have to go through forget, walking through forgiveness. Forgive those people so your heart can be healed in that area so you can move forward. So when God sends that man or woman of God that he has out, has, has picked out for you, that you won't look at that person and thinking he's that other person because it's going to be a whole different person. You know what I'm saying? It just cause you know what I'm saying? You won't get, and being healed will help you um, when being healed and when you're walking in unforgive when you when you being hit being healed and you're walking in forgiveness now you're whole so whole people won't be attracted to broken people you know because hey ladies you know I'm just being real we it ain't our job to fix nobody you know what I'm saying we can't fix nobody we can pray but it's not job to fix nobody it's God's job to fix them so, you know, they got to have that own relationship with Christ. So you, what you would want is somebody that's got their own personal relationship with Christ already love God because they don't really know how to love just cause they've been in other relationships. Don't mean they know how to love because the only way they would know how to truly love somebody is they got to have a personal relationship with Christ and, and so totally sold out to Christ, got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of them. And then they'll be taught how to love because they got to first love God first. When they, and you know, they got, when they love God, they got to teach them how to love themselves. Then they're going to teach them how to love someone else. So if they don't have them been through that experience, you know, I don't care how long they've been doing whatever. If they have never been through that experience, they don't, they can't love you like you need to be loved. So God is going to have someone hand picked out for you for, for that uh, specific 
a, a place in your life. He had somebody already handpicked out for you, but many times we can't see that other person because we still stuck on something else. You know what I'm saying? God has already picked out someone for you, but you know, he's not going to bring him to you until you get healed in that area. Says so. So let me get back on, on here. He said, God does heal the brokenhearted. But the first thing we must do is come in to him in prayer. Go to him in prayer. Be real. Like I said, be real with God. You can't fool God. And many times we can't pe fool people. You know what I'm saying? He said, admit that you need him. Admit that you need God. Yeah, God, I need you. And when I was going through, hey, I admitted that I need God. God, I'm having problems for forgiving this, you know, this, this relationship. You know, I know we ain't together. We, we done got divorced or whatever, but I'm still feeling some type of way about this man. You know, I need you to help me forgive him. So I, when you do send me the man, true man of God, that I will know that's the man of God. And I wouldn't look at him cross-eyed because I'm not fully healed in this other area. And, you know, and I was real with God. And so he helped me heal in that area, heal my heart in that area. So when he sent my, my, the man of God that I have now, I was able to see from him for who he is, a man of God. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't look at cross-eyed with him, you know, because I was healed in that area. So that's why it's so very important. That we allow God to heal us in that area because he has better for us, but he's not going to send better until we get healed in those areas. You know what I'm saying? You want better? Let God heal you in that area. That's the only way you're going to get better is let God heal you in the area. So ask him to help heal your broken heart. Ask him to renew your heart so you'll be able to love and start again in your life. So ask him to heal your heart so you can love, be able to love again. But this time when God send you that, that man or maybe that woman of God, you know, you know, I, you know, I don't know who I was on here, you know what I'm saying, or who will listen to the replay. But, you know, when he, get, when he send you that man or woman of God, you'll be able to appreciate that that's a man of God because God has already spoken to you that that person is coming. And as you've been praying about this young man or this young lady, God's going to let you know that is your wife or that is your, that is your husband. You know what I'm saying? And y'all begin to date, you know, a Christian like dating, you know what I'm saying? Not doing anything like the world doing, but you're going to be dating Christian, Christian dating. You know what I'm saying? You can be, get, be getting to do those, those, those at kind of dating, you know what I'm saying? And then it don't take nobody no no whole long time for them to know if that is your wife or that is your husband. You know what I'm saying? And then when that perfect time comes, God will have that man come to you, woman. Uh, you know, uh, and he, he going to always have the man come to you, woman. You know, we ain't going to go to them and ask them to marry us. No, they going to, God said, he that finds a wife finds a good thing and attains favor from the Lord. So the man is coming to, woman, to the woman. So, you know. You don't that, keep it in the perfect order because when we try to cake it out that order, you end up getting something that you ain't going to be able to deal with. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be stuck with somebody for a whole lot of years of pain and, and heartache, you know, so you need to wait on the Lord. So when he begins, when he send you that, that man of God, God's going to already be confirmed his word. And so when that person becomes coming to you, y'all dating and you're going to get to know him. You're going to take the time to get to know him. Uh, y'all can go to church together. Y'all can pray together. Y'all can uh, fast. Hey, y'all, he, he called you, say, hey, you know, I'm fasting for this particular thing. You want to fast with me? Yo, you know, fasting together. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to start out as you dating. You're going to start out. Oh, you're going to be doing all of that. And it's going to carry over into your marriage. You know what I'm saying? And so it matters, you know, that we be healed in those areas. That we don't walk around still broken year after year after year. We still broken and we still have a broken heart when God wants to heal that area in your life. And God will heal you. Like I said, you got to release it over to him. Whatever's troubling you, whatever's bothering you, release it to God. And he said, Ask him to help heal your broken heart. Ask him to renew your heart so you're able to love and start over in your life. And he would do it. He did it for me. And I know he did it for me. He's able to do it for you. He's no respect the person. Just, he ain't going to just do it for Angela. He'll do it for whoever asks him, whoever comes to him in prayer, whoever comes to him, be real with him. He'll do it for them people as well. But you got to ask him and be sincere by what you asking him. And when he began to reveal things in you, that's in you, 
No, I ain't no denial. When he began to reveal stuff in me, I, I wasn't in denial. Okay, God, you said that? Okay, nah, uh, I, need, I know I got to work on this. Let me work on this. Whatever that I could work on, I worked on. And, and some of the stuff that he, only he could do, he did. You know what I'm saying? But it's going gonna, it's, it gonna to matter. Because when I, when my, me and my husband now, when we got together, there was, we, was, we was connected. Because we were both sick and tired of being in those, those dead-end relationships. He know he knew about the dead end relationships. I knew about the dead end relationships. So when we we met each other, we knew that wasn't it between us. That was what was no dead end relationship between us. We knew this was God. You know what I'm saying? And so when you begin to allow God to heal you, but I'm saying you got to be healed. You got to be healed because you know, uh, and and don't be going to these relationships. You know, uh, uh, what they call them. Um, I used to do that. I did that in the past. You know, um. What was it? You know, you got out of a relationship and you didn't get chance. To, you didn't allow yourself to get healed. Then you jumped in another one. And that, that cat was worse than the other cat. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You know, or what they call it. I can't think of that word, what they call that. Um, um, I can't think of the word. But anyway, I learned my lesson. Hey, because I had a bigger <laughs> bigger nut than the last nut. I'm just being real. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's so important that you allow God to heal you in that area. He said he will heal every part of your heart that you release to him. So you're going to have to release it to him, you know, and quit taking it back. You know, you know, um, he wants to heal you in that area. Let him heal you in that area. Let him rip up everything in you that's not of God, that's not like him, anything. He said he will uproot every broken thing in your heart. He will do it. He did it for me. So I know if he did it for me, he definitely do it for you. And so when he, like I said, when he sends that man, a woman of God, men, He's going to send a woman of God, women. He's going to send a man of God to you. You're going to know it's God. You know, you know, you're going to know it's God because he don't like, he don't like foolish like that other did. I'm just being real. He ain't going to like, no, no, he ain't like cray cray like the other did. You know what I'm saying? He's going to, he's going to be a gentleman. He's going to treat you like a princess. He's going to treat you like the woman of God that you are. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to do you good. You know, he's going to, he's going to love you like you're supposed to be loved. And you know, we, we as women, we don't need to be compromising just to say we're in a relationship. Cause if you suffering in a relationship, that ain't, ain't what happy, where happy is. You know, if you are in a relationship and you suffering, that ain't, ain't nothing happy about that. You know what I'm saying? So God want his daughters happy. His men, his men of God, he want them happy. He wants to be in a, in a relationship. So when you're happy in God, and then God puts you with the man or woman of God that you're supposed to be with. And they are happy already. Y'all can't do nothing but be happy, right? You know what I'm saying? You know, because y'all neither one of y'all bringing nothing from no old relationships in this new relationship. You're not, you're not, not going to look at him and say, well, he just like John. Or, or she ain't going to look at him and say, you like, you, you just like, uh, uh, he gonna, uh, he ain't going to look at her and say, you just like, uh. I'm just going to throw a name on uh, Cynthia. You know what I'm saying? I'm just throwing a name out there. I ain't, call, I ain't talk about nobody personally. But I'm saying, so when you're healed in that area, you, don't, you will never bring up what the other one did. Only time you'll bring it up is when y'all talking together and y'all getting together and y'all talking about what the past relationship y'all was in. And then both of y'all just said, okay, well, we thank God for healing us in that area because now we found each other. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only time you'll bring it up. You'll never bring it up when you're mad at that person. Well, you just like, no, no. Once you're healing that area, it, it, it will it never come out of your mouth. Has never come out of my mouth to tell my husband he likes such and such or that person. He's never said out of his mouth that I'm like such and such that person. Because that's why it's, it's so very important, important that we be healed in that area. You know what I'm saying? We, we got to be healed. So I'm a witness that he will heal your heart if you ask him to. Because he healed my heart. So now I can go on and help someone else get free in that area. Healing is not just for me. It is for some other, for other people. Healing is not just for you. Healing is for other people. So don't you want to be able, when you go minister to someone, don't you want to be able to, that they really truly get free from whatever they're, whatever's holding them, whatever stronghold or uh, uh, whatever's holding them down. Don't you, don't, don't you want them to be able to get free? So healing it just ain't for Angela. It's for whoever that God sent to me. So I can tell them how I got healed and delivered. And now they can go through that same healing and deliverance. So his healing is not just for me. It's not just for you. It's for the people that God has assigned to you. The people that you come in contact with. It's for those people as well. 
Say, because you will help, be able to help someone else once you are truly healed in that area. So once you're truly healed, now you can help someone. So now I've been through the domestic violence, you know, with the other two marriage and other, another relationship I was in. So now I can help somebody about some domestic violence, you know, those that reach out to me that may be going through it or whatever. I can tell them what it took to get me free from these relationships, you know what I'm saying? Because that mean many times we try to stay in these relationships thinking these people are going to change and they don't change you know, you know what i'm saying you know they may may hit you one time and then you um you you walk you leave and then you uh they come back and tell you they apologize say they sorry um um i won't do it again and you go back and they hit you, they gonna beat you up they beat you up even worse you know what i'm saying so you know it's just it's it's a it's a process to get away from those relationships but you know god has has shown me how to do it because I was able to get away with my life. You know what I'm saying? You know, one tried to take it. But you know what? God gave me the what to tell him so he can get off of me. You know what I'm saying? So he could quit choking me. God told me what to tell him. You know? And I wasn't uh, into the Lord like I am now. But he gave me what to say to get him off of me. And he got off of me. You know? And I was able to, you know, I'm alive now because I'm on this video talking to you. So, you know, it's so very important that, you know, we allow God to heal. He wants to heal you. I, I don't let nobody tell you he don't want to heal you. Don't let the devil tell you he don't want to heal you because, yes, he do. He do want to heal you, and he will heal you, but you got to release everything over to him. You got to come to the end of yourself, and it ain't your job to try to figure this out. It ain't your job to try to work this out. Your job is to give it to God. He can work out more, more than we can ever do in, on any given day because he deals with hearts. He's going to deal with whoever's heart, whoever's, whoever you're dealing with, he's going to deal with a heart. He said, we can trust God to heal us when we give him whatever is bothering us. So give him whatever is bothering you. You know, it's a, it's a twofold. You know, you know, a lot of times we're praying and ask God to heal us in this area, but we won't release what we need to release to him. We trying to hold on to it. Let me hold on to it for dear life. But God said, release it. I need you to release it to me. And as soon as you release it to me, I can heal you in that area. And so you can move forward in what I have for you. He said in his word to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. Jesus is very trustworthy. I'm here to let you know you can trust Jesus. Yes, you can. With everything that's concerned you, you can trust him. So you might not be able to trust some people, but you can definitely trust God with your heart. You know, he's, he, he can, he, he, can, he, you can trust him with your heart. Like I said, many times we can't trust other people, but I'm here to let you know you can trust God by the anything. You can trust Jesus. Anything that concerns you, he's concerned about everything that concerns you. He's, he's, he want to make sure you're healed in certain areas, every area of life. He wants us to live the abundant life. That means every area of our life. So whatever area in your life that you're liking in, you got to release it to God. It ain't our job to fix it. On why we think we can fix everything. No, we can't fix everything. You know, we was talking last night in Bible study about how we always trying to fix everything. You know, no, give it to God. That's his job. Why are we trying to take God's job? I, I can't take God's job. You know, I got to let God be God in my life. And that per whoever person, you know, person I'm dealing with, he got to be God in their life. They got to have their own relationship with God. I can't, they can't go by my relationship with God. Everybody got to have their own relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? And so it matters. It's so much. It matters. So forgive whoever you need to forgive. God said he specializes in fixing broken people and broken hearts. He, that's his special, one of his specialties. He had many. He has many. But that is one of them. So he is able to do it. But you first must do your part. Your part is to release it. And his part is to fix it. Not the other way around. You know, a lot of times, you know, we, we think is, you know, we may, oh, well, God, he ain't, well, he ain't moving fast enough. So let me go over here and do this right here because he ain't moving fast enough. No, he moving at, at, at the pace he need to be moving in because we got to need, we're the one that need patience. We're the one that need to be waiting on God instead of do, trying to do it in our own strength. So when we're doing, trying to do stuff in our own strength, it ain't going to, it ain't going to make, it ain't going to last. It ain't going to make it. But because God is going to stand by now, you said you're going to trust God to do it. You will say you're going to trust God to work it out. 
and but when it don't seem like it's happening in a month's time, maybe a week's time, now you now uh, well your a week's time, a month's time, maybe three months time, now you used to put your hand back in it and you get to mess around in it. But you said you trust God. So if you say you trust God, why are you messing with it? You know what I'm saying? Because God is a God is is he's amazing. God is amazing. He can change people's hearts. He can change people's minds. He can do all that. But, you know, it's going to have to be in his time because he got to work some things out of that person. You know, if they still holding on to stuff in their past and why they can't see you like they need to see you, it's because they still holding on what Jenny did and what uh, uh, Tasha did. You know, I'm just calling names. I ain't talking about nobody personally. You know, he still, they still holding on to them. So they ain't, gonna be, they ain't ready for you. You know what I'm saying? Because they still holding on to their past. So God has to heal them from their past so they can be ready for you. So God does. He, he, he'll, he'll work it out to the best of your, his ability. He'll work it out what's going to be beneficial to you. You don't want nothing before it's ready. I don't want nothing before it's ready. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want no blessings unless God has had me ready for them to get them so I can be I'll be able to receive them. So I won't throw away whatever God is doing in my life, going to want to do in my life. So I have to be ready in that area. And just like with anything that we're dealing with, we God has to make sure we're ready in that area before he releases things to us. Jesus, he's very trustworthy. Don't you think you can trust God? Can you trust? Do you believe that you can trust God? I know you can. You can trust him with anything. You can go to him and tell him anything, and he will not tell nobody else. You don't have to worry about nobody else hearing about what you what you may have done in the past or maybe what you done last night. Nobody else has to know about it. But when you tell God, He's gonna work that area out in your life. He got to work something out of you. He's gonna have to work something out of that person as well. So you may not be able to trust some people, but you can trust God. Don't you think you can trust God? You should be able to trust God with everything concerning you. You know, it comes a point in time, you know, when you know when you're your baby in Christ, you may, may continue to still mess with stuff, you know, because you hadn't come into full realization of who God is. But as you get more, more mature in God and you now you know who God is, you need you you should be learning now to keep your head out of stuff when God has told you to keep your head out of stuff because he got that. You know, and you know, you don't want to do anything that's going to uh, revert somebody backwards when God is trying to move them forward. Say so he will make sure your heart is taken care of and healed when it needs to be healed. God specializes in healing broken people. He is a great physician who has never lost the case. He ain't never lost the case. He has never lost the cra- a case. Now, our track record, you know what I'm saying? We, we thought we were we going by our track record. Hey, we done lost a couple things. You know what I'm saying? If you go back to my track record, I done lost a couple things. I, you know, uh, you know, relationships. I done lost relationships. I done lost, you know, houses, cars, whatever. But God has never lost a case. He has never lost anything. You know, he's going to do it to the best of my ability. So now everything, all those relationships that he, God has took me out of, it was a blessing. Because I could have enda- been in danger of losing my life over some foolishness. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And so when he took me out of those domestic violence relationships, one was physical, other was verbal. Either way, they still hurt. You know, words hurt. People say, six and stone may break my bones, but words never hurt. That's the biggest lie they ever told. Words do hurt. They, yeah, they do. They hurt. You know what I'm saying? And they, they, they pack as a, a much punch as somebody hitting somebody in the eye. It, hit, it hurt just as much. You know what I'm saying? And so... God wants to heal us of every word curse. I call them a word curse. When somebody has called you out your name or says anything that, that God didn't say about you, that's a word curse. So we can able, we're can we able to cast those word curse down. We don't have to be who nobody called us. We're going to be who God said we are. We don't have to be who nobody else called us or, you, or, or have called you. We don't have to be that person. We're going to be who God has called us. He has called you his daughter. He has called you his son. He has called you a mighty man of valor. He has called you mighty woman, uh, a Proverbs 31 woman. That's who has called you. So we need to be who God has called us to be and not be answering to know any other names. Don't answer to any other names. After the day, don't answer any other names. If they don't, whatever they calling you, don't line up with God's word. Don't answer to it. Don't come in agreement with it. You, I'm telling you what God has said you are. 
So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be who God has called us to be, regardless of who got a problem with it, who don't like it, who got something to say about it. That that ain't that, that's not none of our concern. We gonna give that person to God because God is the one that's gonna change the hearts and change their mind. We ain't it ain't my job to go try to change nobody's mind about who who God has called me to be. You know, I'm just gonna walk in my calling. And then they can see who God has called me to be. And they can see that God is on my life. You know, I don't have to try to prove myself to nobody. You know what I'm saying? So you got to get in that realization. You don't have to prove yourself to nobody. But you just be who God has called you to be. And if God has told you, has revealed to you that you need to be, that you need to be delivered in certain areas. Or you need to be walking in forgiveness in certain areas. Then you go ahead and do what you need to do. So you can be healed and you can be delivered and set free. So you can be whole. So whenever God has for whatever God's had for you. Because many times there's no advancement until you heal, you heal in that area. Because you can't even go to your next level in God. You still holding that stuff in your heart. There's no way he's going to advance you to your next level until you allow him to heal those areas. And when you allow him to heal those areas in your heart, now you're the healed, delivered, and you set free. Now you're whole. Now you're able to help someone else get free. You know what I'm saying? And so it matters. It matters. Say so he's a great physician who had never lost a case. Hey, Prophet Tara and Prophet Sylvia, how y'all doing? Say he never lost a case. Whatever, I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't, I don't if who is mother, daddy, father, sister, brother, cousin, boy, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, whoever. He's able to deal with those people better than we ever could. You know, only thing we got to do is live the life before them. Let them see God in us, regardless. You know, regardless of what's going on, how bad it may hurt, they gonna still see God in me. You know what I'm saying? Let them see the God in you. Say he, whenever we, but we got to release what's bothering us. When we act like ain't nothing wrong with us. And when we know everything, a lot of stuff is wrong with us. You know, many times we in denial. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with me. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you know something wrong with you. God be steady revealing it. God has people steady prophesying to you about this same manner. But you said, no, that ain't me, God. That must be for the person next door to me. No, it's, it's for you. You know what I'm saying? It's for me. When he was showing me, it was for me. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't in denial because I want to be free. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to be still bound. I ain't want to keep going around this mountain from year after year. And I look back 10 years from now, I'm still going around this same mountain. Uh-uh. I want to be free. And, you know, and then when he freed me in that area, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we can go forward, you know, and do what God has told us to do. You know, he, he, he loves us so much. You know, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't know how to explain, you know, how much he loves you, but he loves you so much that he'll send people to minister to you. He'll send people to, to uh, prophesy to you. He'll send people to encourage you, uh, you know, the different, different areas in your life. He sends people to you all the time. You know what I'm saying? And that's to encourage you to keep going. Because greater, there's greater coming, but greater can't come unless you're healed. In your heart, you got to heal your heart. He said, "Only the pure in heart will see the Lord." Because you want to see when you, uh, whenever um, God forbid it, you know what I'm saying. But you know, whenever you ever leave this earth, you know what I'm saying. You know, and you want to make sure that for maybe when you be absent from the body, you be present with the Lord. That you want to make sure you're on your way to heaven. You know, but He said, "Only the pure in heart will see the Lord." Now we all gonna see Him in Judgment Day, but you want to make you want to make sure heaven is your home. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to be holding nothing in your heart against nobody. Cause ain't I don't I ain't found nobody worth it myself. You know what I'm saying? That not not to be not to have my eternal home in heaven. I ain't found nobody worth that. You know what I'm saying? You know, so you know it's so important that we forgive people and so we can move forward and do what God has called us to do. He's he allows many of us to be broken so that we can come to the end of ourselves. Many times we try to come, we got to come to the end of ourselves. We steady trying to put our hands in it. Well, if that ain't, that ain't work. So let me go do this. And that, that don't work. Well, that ain't work a couple of days later. Let me go do this. Well, that ain't work either. Well, let me go do this. When you going to let God do what he said he's going to do? When you going to let God do what he going to do? So when you take your hand out of it, when you come to the end of yourself and allow God to be God in your life and allow God to work this thing out, it's going to be worked out. Excellent. See, excellent. God don't do anything half. When, when have you known God to do anything half? 
God do, and he's excellent by everything that he does for his children. So you got to allow him to be God in your life and quit messing in when something he has told you to keep your hand out of it. Keep, keep, keep your hand out of it. Quit messing in it and just do what he has told you to do. He said, allow God to take over. And so he can be, when you allow God to take over, you take your hand off of it and you allow God to take over. Now God can work it out, but you got to keep your hand out of it. I don't care how long it may take. You know, you just got to have that mentality. Well, I trust God. And I already know that I can trust God that he's going to work it out to my best, to my best interest, whether it be working out the way I want to work it out or not. If it don't work out the way you want to work it out, guess what? It's still in your best interest. You know what I'm saying? Don't you know God know better than you? He know he's in our future. He already knows. He already knows. So don't you know, don't you know, man, woman of God, that God knows better than you about anything? So if it don't work out the way you have been praying for it to work out or uh, you think you want it to work out and it works out another way, don't you think he don't you don't don't you know he did what's best for you? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we can't fight God. Let God be God. Let him do because he knows he, he knows our future. He knows everything about us. He already know what it would be like if you done maybe got with that person. He, um, he already know you was going to be screaming and mad, pulling your hair out of all this frustration and confusion going on. He already knew that. You know what I'm saying? So he had, that's why he didn't allow a lot of things to happen in our lives. But we got to come to the end of ourselves and leave it alone. When God say leave it alone, if we... Hey, for instance, like if we leave it alone, it'll, it'll happen so much quicker if we just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Because as long as we messing in it, God ain't working. As long as I got, we got a hand in it, God ain't moving. But immediately you take your hand out of it and put and get it off, off your mind. Put your mind on the things of God and begin to do what God has called you to do. And you'll look back uh, maybe a couple of months. And it got and already worked it out. But as long as you keep your hand dangling in it. God ain't God is looking at you like I thought she gave it to me. Why she keep why she keep after a couple of weeks ago? Why she keep messing in it? Why she keep why she keep and I don't told her I got it. And all she gotta do is go ahead and do what I told her to do. Say you be willing and obedient, I you will eat the good of the land. He said Matthew six and thirty three, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. So if you already seeking God, put him first, put him back in his first place where he's supposed to be in the beginning. So when you put him back in his first place, and the only person that you're seeing now is God, and you're gonna do what God has told you to do, and you're gonna move forward and do what God has told you to do, all that stuff that's that you want to be added, God will start adding it. But you know, it's going to take walking in obedience. So we're going to have to walk in obedience. You know what I'm saying? You know, there ain't no way if and a but a way around it. You're going to have to walk in obedience to what God is telling you to do. You don't have an ability to heal your own heart. You can't heal it. How are you going to heal it? How are you, how are you going to heal your own heart? I just want to know. How are you going to be able to heal your own heart? It will take the touch of the love of Jesus. To be able to have a transformed, healed heart. Now we can read the word of God. You know, it, it, we can have a transformed mind. Because many times we try to change our behaviors when our mind ain't changed. But we're going to have to change our mind. Once we change our mind, then our behaviors are falling in suit. You know, so maybe if ain't nothing changing, maybe you're trying to change your behaviors first. And that's not going to work. You're going to change your mind. We're going to have to renew our mind in the word of God. Change our mind about whatever that situation is. And give it back to God and allow God to work out that area. And then you can walk forward and be who God has called you to be. And everything that's assigned to you, you know, that song, uh, what God has for me. I ain't going to sing it, but I'm just saying what God has for me, it is for me. So don't you know that whatever God has for you is for you. It's, it's just going to manifest in your life at one point in your life. So it's coming. But, you know, you got to allow yourself to be, to go through the process. Whatever process God want to take you through. You got to allow yourself to go through that process. You know, we can't skip no processes. We got God wants to heal. Say God specializes in fixing broken people and broken hearts. And he, and this is letting you know he's going to fix you, but he's gonna still going to use you. He still can use you. You know, he's not going to throw you away. He's still going to use you. So he, he's going to, but he wants you healed in those areas. 
Say God specialized in taking our broken lives, shattered dreams, and failures, and put us back together and put us all back together again. You know, He's He's specializing in that. Our brokenness is God's opportunity to show His grace, power, and provisions to us. So our brokenness, and when we go to Him broken in a broken state, He's able to renew us. He's able to refresh us. He able to fill us all up back all over again with his Holy Spirit. He's able to do all that. We can't do it on that. We can't do it in our own strength. We need God. You know, we need him. There's no way we can do anything in this world without God. We need his presence in our lives. You know, we need the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. So no matter how broken you are, Jesus can repair your heart. He can make all things new in your life. So God, no matter how broken we is or how, how bad we feel like we are, God able to fix that. He can fix that. I'm a witness. He can fix that. He can fix it. He fixed me. He's able to fix you as well. There are many scriptures in the word of God that we can read and study that help us remove every painful memory that has many of us stuck in neutral. So many of us stuck in neutral. We ain't moving. We ain't moving forward. We just, we ain't actually going backwards, but we just stuck in one, one spot. We in neutral. God wants to get us out of neutral. Don't you know when you got a car in neutral, only thing that you can do with it is somebody got to push you out the road. Say if your car broke down in the middle of the road and somebody want to push you out the road, they tell you to put your car in neutral and somebody's going to push you on out the road. You know what I'm saying? So when in neutral, you know, God wants to push you to your next level, but you got to release a lot of things that's troubling you. You got to release those things over to God. Give it to God. Cast your cares on the Lord and he'll care for you. He's going to heal those areas. He's able to heal those areas. Say, um, he said, so we, we got to allow God to do it. You know, quit fighting him on it. Quit. Don't, you know, don't fight him on it when he want to heal you. Don't fight him when he's revealing things to you about you. Like I said, a lot of times we'll complain about everybody else, but you know, we forgot, you know, we got some issues too. You know what I'm saying? So when he began to reveal himself to me, I ain't denied. He said, you're, you're walking in anger. I said, yep, that's what, yeah, I, I am that. I'm, I'm very angry. You know what I'm saying? And so I allowed him to get to go through deliverance with that. And it's a continuous process because we living in this world. We dealing with all type of people, you know, and every day, you know, you may not, you know, you may not get along with everybody. You know, you try to, but you know that, you know, you don't always, somebody may say something um, that make you mad. You know what I'm saying? But you know, the word of God said, be angry, but sin not. So, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to show, we're not going to do what we could do back in the day. You know, when somebody would have said that, you know, or said something to me or whatever out of line, I made it when I'd have been popping up on them. I'm just being real, you know, but now since I have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me, you know, I just, God said, ignore them. It ain't even worth it. You know what I'm saying? It's not even worth it to lose your, to lose your witness, you know, going back and forth with people. It's not even worth it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you keep your eyes on the, Keep your eyes on the Lord. You know, keep your eyes on the Lord. Say so we need our hearts healed so we can open our hearts to other people that are going through and show God's perfect Lord towards them. So when our hearts heal, now we're able to open our hearts to other people. So you know, when you see somebody going through, now you're able to recognize, you know, because God has, since I've been, you know, been healed from the anger, I'm able to recognize when somebody's angry. And I look at them, I say, oh, yeah, they walking in anger. They, in, they angry. They is bad. You know what I'm saying? Because, God, you know, it, you, you're, uh, now you can discern that spirit because you dealt with it. You know what I'm saying? So now it's easy to, to discern in other people. So now you can tell them, say, well, how, how you got free? You know, you be talking to them, you tell them how you got free. And so they can be free as well. You know what I'm saying? Because it does, you know, we don't have to walk in anger, you know, get mad because people won't do what they, we want them to do. You know, that may, based on my problem, I'm mad because people won't do what I want them to do. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's not, God let me know it's not about you, Angela. It's about me. It's about him. It's not, it's not about me. It's not about what I want. It's about what God wants. What does God want concerning that, your life in that manner? What does God want concerning that? And so, you know, so we got to be, you know, we just, it just said God is, is, uh, he wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set free. So we need our hearts healed so we can heart, open our heart to other people. So, you know, maybe, you know, somebody sent them to you or maybe, um, you know, God may send, call you to a, a, maybe a child or something and you want, you don't want to uh, operate from a place of anger. You want to show them the love of God. So 
then when they begin to see the love of God in you, they're going to be wanting to go to go with you to church. Maybe they're going to be wanting to know the God that, you know, uh, they maybe want to, you know, uh, at some point in time, they want to join the church. She said, cause I came to this church and I just see the love of God in everybody. Everybody embrace me. Everybody show me the love of God. And then you begin to draw. That's how you're going to draw people to unto Christ showing the love of God. They got to see it in us. Before they, before they want God, you know, and that's, you know, that's keeping it 100. So if we walk around angry at our face, all toe up for the flow up, mad lips, all poked out, who won't, who won't, who will want, who will want that God? Nobody. Ain't nobody going to want that. And so we need, you know, um, open up your heart and allow God to heal you. Be real with God. You know, you ain't fooling God. You know, be real with him exactly where you are. I tell people all the time, I be real with God. Just like I'm talking to y'all. Uh, teaching y'all this is how I talk to God and I tell him Lord I'm having a problem with that person right there I said you he tell me like if I get offended he if I feel like I'm getting offended with somebody and I began to tell him about it he said pray for him I said pray for him you know most of the time we ain't want to pray for nobody we mad at or we angry at or we are offended at we ain't want to pray for those people he said pray for him I said pray for him I said he said pray for him for a pure heart that they get saved, delivered, and set free. We ain't going to pray that God get them. God get them. Mm -mm. We're going to pray from uh, from a pure place that they need saving. They need deliverance. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you you can be able to see the things in them that, you know, that doesn't line up with God's word. You know, so we're going to pray that they be healed, delivered, and set free. That they be have, begin to have encounters with God. You know, with encounters with the risen Savior. They begin to have encounters. That's going to change their life for the good. That is what we're going to be praying and so that's how God deals with me. You know, when I feel, feel myself getting that way, I said, okay, I got to go praying. So I just I add that person to my list and begin to pray for them and do what God has told me to do. And after a while, I ain't even mad at them. How can you be mad with somebody you praying for? That you sincerely, that you sincerely praying for to them to get healed and delivered and to set, be set free. You can't be mad. After a while, you're not even mad at them no more. Because you see they need God. You know, and they see that you see they're doing things. The things that they do is because they don't have God. You know what I'm saying? They don't really have them. No, no matter how much they may say they have them, you know, but their fruit speaks for them. You know, if their fruit is bad, then they, they don't have they don't have God like they like they thought they had God. And they need a deeper relationship with God. And so that's the point of, you know, um, that's the point of praying for them. Because you you can get a prayer through now you know you don't got you don't walk you're walking not now you're no longer walking in unforgiveness you're walking in forgiveness you're no longer walking in bitterness you're walking in love and now you know when you're praying your prayers reaching the throne room and now you know you you said uh, we had the scripture today this morning on the prayer line the effectual prayer of a righteous person availed much so you're walking in righteousness holding in righteousness walking with a pure heart. So now your prayer is reaching the throne room. So now when you pray for a person, God is, you know, he's hearing that prayer and he's going to uh, hasten to perform that prayer. And so now you see that person change. That person is no longer the hateful person they used to be. That person is more loving, more easy to get along with because, yeah, because of your prayers. You know, so that's why it's very important that we let, allow God to heal us in those areas. Because I don't know about you, but I have a lot of family members that need Lord. That need the Lord. So I got to walk before them holy and righteous. They got to see God in me. And they got to see the love of God in me. You know, I ain't saying be no doorman or nothing like that. But I'm just saying you. they got to see the love of God in you. And when they begin to see the love of God in you, you're no longer hateful. You're no longer mean. You're no longer um, religious. You know, with that religious spirit, you know, you're, you're, you have a true relationship with Christ. And so when they can see the, the true love of God in you, they're going to be wanting to know you, the Lord, the God that you know. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to be wanting to get closer to God. So it does matter. It does matter that we're healed. It does. You know, I don't let the enemy tell you it don't matter that you're healed. Yes, it does. Because you wanna, you're going to want to be able to get a, a, a prayer through. You want to be able to get your, your prayers, read the throne room of heaven. So when you're walking in unforgiveness, when you're walking in bitterness, there's a wall between you and the Lord. You know, and your prayers are not getting where you needed them to get. And, you know, all of us, everybody on this live or everybody comes on the replay, we need our prayers to be heard by the Lord. We need him to be moving on, on our behalf. We need that. We really need that, you know. And, and we don't have no time to just be praying to be praying. No, 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 um, we don't want to be praying no, um, 
no prayers that ain't going above the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? We want to go into the throne room of God. And so if you if you are uh, walking in any of these, you know, um, I'm not here to beat up on nobody. I'm just here to get a word. This is the word God gave me about being being. Um, he wants to heal those uh, those broken people. He wants to heal every broken heart and he's able to do it. And he, he when he did it with me, you know, what I'm saying so, like I said, I'm, I'm you know, when when somebody is around me or whatever and I can still see the brokenness in them. And then a lot of times they're said or not, but they, I can see it. There is still in them. You know, they, they ain't fully delivered. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, be real with yourself. You know, you know, you, you know, you don't have to tell me you go straight to God. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to call me on the phone. You don't have to come tell me or whatever. Go straight to God and be real with God. Be real. I only think, you know, um, God wants us to be real with him. You know, he don't want us to be Acting like we ain't got nothing going on with us, ain't nothing, and we don't have no problems when we all know we got issues. Everybody on this earth got an issue. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, we need when we need when we know we need something, we need to reach out to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Hey, God, I'm having problem with this. Uh, I, I I I tried. I don't try to forgive me my own strength. Well, you ain't gonna be able to do it. You're gonna have to have the grace of God to be able to forgive His unmerited power. That's, you know, his more than, grace is more than uh, unmerited favor, but it's the ability to do what we couldn't do in our own. So, no, you can't, you can't forgive me on your own. You're going to need God's grace. So, to activate the grace, you're going to need it, God, you're going to need faith, the faith of God. So, your faith is going to activate God's grace, and then now you'll be able to, to forgive them, uh, forgive that person, because you're going to use God's grace to be able to do it. You're not going to do it on your own. If you're looking to do it on your own, it's not going to happen. You need God. You're going to need his grace to be able to forgive that person. And, you know, you're going to have to just look at that person, you know, whatever, whoever person you're dealing with. Uh, if they're not saved, if they're not fully delivered, if they that haven't fully surrendered their life to God, they're operating from a point of carnality. And then you already know the word of God said so that's enmity against God. I don't care what they saying or how they act. They, 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 they ain't where they need to be in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't they don't have the uh fullness of God. I put it like that. They don't have the fullness of God. They operating from a, a low percentage. They don't have the fullness of God. And so when you already know this, they're gonna act like their father. If their father is not God, and they'll so act like their other father, their father's the devil. So that's why they act like they ain't. You know what I'm saying? And you can't make them act like God when ain't God ain't in them. So they got to want God for themselves. They got to want that personal relationship with God. They got to want him. We can't make nobody want God. They got to want him. They got to. God gave us all a choice. You know, he, he gave us a choice. So it's got to be their choice that they receive to see God. They got to. It's got to be their choice. That they receive the Holy Spirit. It's got to be their choice. And so, you know, until they get it, get their relationship, the, the right relationship with Christ, they can't. They ain't no help to you. They can't help you. They ain't going to be no help to you. They're going to be a hindrance. They, they're not going to be any help to you, but they're going to be a hindrance. And don't let nobody hinder your relationship with Christ. I don't care who it is. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who it is. Do not let nobody hinder your relationship with Christ. You know what I'm saying? Because Christ should be first. You put him first, all other things will be added unto you. You know what I'm saying? And don't, and just like I said, it's so very important. It's so very important. So um, I'm going to say this right here. This right here. Say, have you ever noticed that when you're going through something, God would use you to minister or give a word of encouragement to someone when you actually need it for yourself? Have you ever had to minister to someone and you need the word for yourself and you hurting and you broken yourself, but God will send someone else for you to give them that word and you'll wonder like, why, Lord, why, them, why are you sending them to me when I need it for myself? Said so that is how he helps us to build our spiritual muscles. Everything in our lives will not be pleasant all the time. You know, we're not, we're not, everything is not going to be a hunky dory, as they say. It's not going to be a bed of roses all the time. We're going to go through things because we're in the world, but not of the world. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to go through things. It said you begin to feel and wonder why God is sending people to you when you need help yourself. He said, for an example, God tells you to start a blog. It talks about marriage and relationships. This, for example, I tell you to start a blog that's talk about marriage and relationships 
and you feel some type of way because your marriage is jacked up and your, your relationships are too. So God is going to build something in you as you seek God's face about what you're going to write on this blog. He's going to heal you in that area too. You know what I'm saying? And so now only you, not only that, you are writing in that blog for someone else, but God is healing you in the process. He said, but he will download into you exactly what you need to tell other people so they can be encouraged in their marriage. And that same word going to help you get delivered. That same word. You know what I'm saying? And so we got to allow God to heal us. You know, quit being in denial. You know, ain't, you ain't going to get nowhere being in denial. You know, you're not going to get in. You're not going to get healed. You're not going to get delivered. You're not going to get set free being in denial. You just be truth about it. Be truthful about it. I'm just, this word today is just to let you know. Be truthful about where you are in, in, with, in God. With, with, be truthful because we can't pull the wool over God's eyes. And many times we can't pull the wool over nobody else's eyes. If anybody walking in discernment and got a true relationship with Christ, they can see what's on you. They can see whatever spirit that you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, so allow God to heal you in that area. So when he says if you need help in whatever area you need deliverance in whatever area, don't deny that you need help when you know you need help. You reach out to who you know, the persons or persons more than one, you know, who can help pray you through. So help walk you through deliverance so you can be delivered and set free because God got, wants to use you. He wants to use you. Just because you're broken now don't mean you're going to be broken in the, in the future. Allow God to do what he want to do because he uses broken people. He uses those people. You know, he, he's not going to turn his back on you. You know, so don't turn your back on him. He's there to help you if you allow him to help you. But you first must admit that you got a problem so you can get that help. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way. He's not going to force it on you. He's not going to make you do it. You got to want it. You got you to be real with yourself, you know, just like I was. Be real with yourself about what you need from the Lord. You know, I mean, you don't got to try to impress nobody. You know, nobody even got to know what's going on with you. You just tell the Lord. Go when your private time, get in the face of the Lord, and you be real with God. And tell him, God, I need help because I'm drowning him, and I need help. If you don't help me, I don't know how I'm going to make it. You know, just be real with him, and he's going to help you. And he's going to send the right people to be able to help you get through whatever you're going through. He's, he's there for us. We need to utilize our help. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, when we're in denial and we may like, we, we may like ain't nothing wrong with us, we still walk around wounded from stuff in our childhood. You know what I'm saying? And now you're maybe, I'm just giving her age. I'm not saying about nobody age. I use my age. I'm 56 years old. And I was 53. I'm just being real. I'll be always transparent. I ain't trying to hide nothing for nobody. I was 53 when I got healed from this spirit of anger. 53. I don't want you to be no 53 before you get healed from whatever you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Don't let it fester that long. You go ahead and, and allow God to heal you in that area. So you can be further along. You know what I'm saying? That God's going to take you to a whole nother level in him. And he got people that you are called to, you are destined to, but you, he needs you healed before he releases you to those people. So allow him to heal you in that area. And just like the word he sent, you know, he give, when he gives me words, it comes to the, to the ones that's giving it word first. It came to me and now he's, you know, I'm giving it to you. You know, he wants to heal broken people. You know, many people you, you come in contact with, they're just holding on to stuff that they need to been been let go years ago. You know, you been I I know, I know family members fell out with each other, been mad for years. Some of them dying gone wherever. You know, still mad at somebody over nothing. Really? You know, that let release that. Let them folks go. So you can go on and be who God has called you to be. Don't 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 leave this world mad at nobody ain't nobody worth it where you gonna spend eternity nobody i don't know nobody worth that it's where you're gonna spend eternity you want to be when you break your heart stop beating that last time you want to make sure everything in your heart is already is it's been settled your heart is pure so you would be asking from the body you'll be present with the lord that is what that you should be desiring 
you know, and not just holding on to things, you know, just cause you can, you know what I'm saying? Release those people. God wants to heal you. He specializes. He's, that's his specialty. One of his specialties. He has many, but he specializes in fixing broken people and healing broken hearts. So allow him to do so, you know, because many of us have so much potential, so much potential in God. But, you know, when we are, when we allow things, holding on to things and not releasing things, we can't go to that next level in God. It said, God used many broken people in the Bible to do the work of the Lord. They may have started out broken. By the time Jesus got through with them, they were no longer broken. Jesus is the potter and we are the clay. He makes masterpieces. You know, you ever seen, um, he said he put the potter, he said he would put us back on the potter's wheel. If there are any areas of the base that is broken, he will put us back on the wheel and redo us and make us much better than we were before, much more priceless. So, you know, just like somebody uh, doing the pottery, making the pottery, if they had happen to see a little speck in there and it's not good, it's a little blemish or whatever, or a little crack in there, they will redo it. They mash it all up together and redo it and make it. And next time they look at it, it'll be a beautiful vase. And they paint it and everything and put it in a little stove. And when they come get through, it's a masterpiece. Jesus want to make you a masterpiece. Allow him to make you a masterpiece. But the only way to be a masterpiece, we must be healed in those areas. So when he does send us out, he put us in that quiver and he shoot us out to wherever he's going to do, whatever destiny that he has placed on our lives. We'll be able to stand because, hey, if we can't get over something going on now, you know what I'm saying, in our lives. And when we get out there full time ministry, you know, maybe traveling this nation, somebody do something to you did and you're going to still be walking in unforgiveness. You know, so you got to learn how to deal with it now. What in the stage that you're in, because you're going to deal with it as long as you living on this earth, you're going to deal with people and you're going to deal with situations. So when you uh, when you uh, work your way through this right now. And so, and you already know what it takes to be healed in those areas. And so when somebody come at you wrong, you already know not to take the bait of Satan, you know, because you know, that's a bait to get you uh, not, you know, not uh, to try to uh, destroy you and the ministry God has placed on the inside of you. You know what I'm saying? That is one of the, the tricks of the enemy for, the, for us to walk in offense all the time. So when you're offended, you can't receive from nobody. Because many times, you know, maybe classes are things you're supposed to be taking for certain people. But if you're walking in a fence toward those people, you cannot receive what you need from those people. Because you don't want to hear nothing they got to say. So that's the point of being healed. You know, allow God to heal you. This is the word that he gave me. That he fixes broken people and he fixes broken hearts. He does that. That's one of his specialties. He has many. But we got to allow him to do it. And we can't keep walking in denial saying it's not us when we know it is. It is us. If God keep revealing it to us, then it's us. You know, we can point fingers at everybody else. But it's, it, most of the time it is us. Like I said, when he's revealed it to me, I don't deny it. I'm like, yeah, you're right, God. And, I, and, you know, like many times we'll be in church and the word be coming forward and God be saying something. And I was like, wow. I was like, oh, oh, God, right there. That, mm, that hurt right there. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, he's doing it to help us. So we won't keep being stuck in neutral. God wants us to move forward and be all he has called us to be. But it's going to take, it's a process. You know, a lot of times, like I said, you know, um, it may be a process you forgiving it, walking in forgiveness. But start, at least start the process of forgiving people so you can move forward. Allow God to move you forward. Allow God to heal what he need to heal in you. You know, I mean, many times, you know, he, when he, he give us words, all the words ain't no good. You know, I mean, it's a good word, but everything is not a, a shouting, a shouting word, you know, that you get up and praise the Lord, you know, praise the Lord on, you know what I'm saying? That you're going to be shouting around the building, around the church. It ain't always that. Like he rebukes us too. You know, he does that. You know what I'm saying? And he does that because he loves us. He only rebuked those that he loves. So, you know, don't get offended, you know, at this word. You just receive the word. If it's for you, receive it. And, you know, you take it and run with it. And so God can change some things in us that he can perfect things in us. You know, so we will begin to look like more like Jesus each and every day. 
You know, that's what we should be striving the more, the more and look like Jesus. Jesus was offended plenty of times, you know, he, but he never took the bait of Satan because he knew that was the enemy. You know, um, when he went in, um, went in the, um, when he went in the, uh, the, uh, the temple and they were selling and doing all kind of, um, uh, uh, cheating, cheating people out of different things. He went in there with that whip and he beat those people out the temple because he said that was supposed to be a house of God, not a, a den of thieves. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, um, when the, the Pharisees did whatever they did to him, um, when they rejected him, they would receive who he was, but he didn't stop his mission. Then he, he, I'm glad he didn't because if he did, we wouldn't have the right to the tree of life because only through his shed blood that I can even be saved. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I'm glad he kept on his mission. So we got to do it as well. But we got to walk in forgiveness. So he was on the cross. They had crucified him. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. He forgave them on why he was on the cross. So if we, if God, if Jesus can forgive we know we can. We should be able to do it as well. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be holding things for years and years and years. When when Jesus forgave for them for killing him, but he had that was his that was his um he had to happen the way it happened so he could live again. You know what I'm saying? So we we just need to uh, forgive people. You know, and I mean really forgive people. I really release those people. God wants to give you so much more, but the more is held up because of the walking in unforgiveness, the walking in bitterness, the walking in, you know, I, Lord, I, hope, I hope it ain't with the hatred. You know what I'm saying? But we need to, uh, we need to release it. God want to give you so much more, but the more is through healing. Healing has to take place for the more to, sh to show up in your life. So if you want the more in your life, you just allow God to heal those areas. Be real with God. Tell God how you feel. No, don't be sugarcoating it. You're mad. Just say you're mad. I'm mad at that person. I don't like the way they treated me. I, I, I just, I'm having a hard time forgiving them. I need God. I need you to help me. I need you to heal my heart so I can forgive these people and I can truly release these people. And guess what? He will do it. He, he I've done it for me many times. You know, I, like I said, I, I just be real. I, don't, I ain't got time to be fake and phony. I just be real with him and let him know exactly where I'm coming from. You know, and so he helps me healed in that area. You know, because some of the things that happened in my life, you know, if I'd have still been holding on to it, I don't think i will be on this live doing these live videos. I don't think I'd be here. You know, I, I'm just being real. I don't think I'd be here if I was walk, still walking in unforgiveness. I don't think I'd be here. So, you know. Don't, don't allow anybody have that much power over you where you can't move forward and do what God has told you to do. Don't allow, don't allow nobody to have that much power. You, if anybody that need help, if anybody going to have power, you let it be God have power over you. No person should have that much power. You, where you just drop everything and don't want to do nothing else. Don't want to do nothing else for the Lord because of what someone else done. You know what I'm saying? But, but you not, you got to put your trust in God. You're going to trust God. Either you're going to trust God or you're not. You know, we got to put all our trust in God and keep our hands out of it. When God says, keep your hand out of it and allow God to heal those, our hearts in those areas. So we can be free. God wants us free. So Father God, we pray right now in Jesus name for those that came on the live and those that came on the replay right now in Jesus name. If they are holding anything in their heart. Like unforgiveness or bitterness or hatred or offense, Lord, we pray right now they release it over to you, that you are uprooted out of their lives, out of their hearts right now in Jesus' name. Remove them hearts of stone right now in Jesus' name and give them a heart of flesh. And Lord, help them to fall deeper and deeper in love with you right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that they will surrender everything that concerning them over to you right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we love you. We magnify you. We lift your name on high. Because you're worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that, you know, that is all I'm going to say on today. It's a powerful word. You know, you know, we got to look at ourselves. You know, we can always look at other people. But we're going to have to look at ourselves on this one. God's, God wants to heal. And he said deliverance and, and healing is the children's bread. So if you're a child of God, healing and deliverance is for you. So God wants to heal. So allow yourself to be healed. So you can be all that God has called you to be. I don't know about you, but I want all God has for me. I don't want nothing blocking what God has for me. 
You know what I'm saying? Cause you know what I'm saying? I don't want nothing blocking what God has for me. And I, I, I just feel like you should, you should, I don't know if you feel like that as well, but that's the way I feel. I don't want nothing or no one blocking what God has for me. So that is all I'm going to say on today. And I pray someone has gotten something out of the lesson. So it's a proof. It's a truly powerful lesson. You know, like I said, it came to me first when he gave it to me. And I was like, yeah, I said, cause I remember when I was very, very broken. I, you know, I was very broken, depressed, uh, my mind going down and nothing. I couldn't sleep. Next thing up, end up on sleeping pills because I couldn't sleep. My mind twirling, just tw just going, trying to figure out everything. You know, it ain't my job. It's God's job. I'm going to either let God be God or I'm going to figure it out. And I, when I'm trying to figure it out, it ain't working. I'm, I'm now I'm up all night. I you know, you know, I got to be on these, these sleeping pills for what I was on them for like three years. You know, and but God delivered me. I'm no longer on them, and I go to when I go to sleep, I go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I had to come to the end of myself that I know I can't work it out. It's, I just got to be God. I got to let God be God. And when I let God be God, now I'm I'm able to go to sleep. When it's time to go to sleep, I go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Don't need no kind of medication to go to sleep. You know, but it's gonna have to come a point in time when we can take our hand off it. And allow God to be God. So when you allow God to be God in your life, everything that you've been praying for, you're interceding for, or whatever, it's going to be according to God's will. If it's whatever, if it's God's will for your life, for that to manifest in your life, as you begin to move forward and do what God has told you to do, keep your mind off of that foolishness. You know, I call it foolishness. Anything that's blocking your, your, your relationship with God is foolishness. Because you already know who God is. You know, because he talked to you on a regular basis. So you already know who God is. So don't allow nobody to get in between your, you and your relationship with God. I'm here to let you know. Ain't nobody worth it. I ain't found nobody worth it. I'm just saying. I love my husband, true enough. But in between me and my relationship with God, you know, he already know. You know, and he, he's not going to try to come between me and my relationship with God because he loves God too. And he wants to be all he can be in God. And I, will, I want to be all I can be in God. So... We will know we got uh, Jesus is our third car strand. We, ain't, we can't lose because we already know when the enemy comes and we already recognize when he coming, when it stuff that he does, we know that's the enemy. So we, when we know when it's God and so we ain't going to get the two mixed up. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but this, this, like I said, this is it. I'm not going to say it anymore. I'm going to get off here. But I like to say, I pray someone has gotten something out of the lesson. Those that came on the live or in the replay. And this God is saying this because he loves you. You know, he's not there to be on, beat up on nobody. He he's saying it because he loves you. Because you have so much potential on the inside of you. But it can't go forward until healing take place. Well, I love y'all. I pray that y'all will have a blessed rest of y'all day. God bless you.